Hello, hi everyone. So, if you want to extend your battery life, if it's a sealed battery, or if it's a custom made battery with a BMS, then this video is for you. In today's video, we are gonna talk about this solar charge controller, which is very important in my opinion. If you are using a similar solar panel under, in my case, 650 watts because I'm using 12 volts so because I heard stories that they are using directly the solar panel with the battery you should never ever do that because you are destroying your battery and it doesn't have the solar panel neither and as always you should use some kind of controller in my case, this is a PWM, a Pulse Wide Modulation Controlled Solar Charge Controller. So, there are some numbers. Probably, you are aware, for optimal charging, you should have some kind of documentation. And in today's video, we are covered we will cover the most of that excellent documentation of the solar charge controller. Uh, I'm just cleaning a bit of the front because I will put uh, everything over here that you can see. So what are you usually receiving from that kind of order of the solar panel? So obviously the solar panel itself and if you ask, then the battery charge controller or the solar charge controller, you should definitely go for the solar charge controller. And cable for the battery and cable for connecting to the panel. So in the back there are two USBs and output as 5 or 3 amps, which we have tested in my previous video if it's charging as it should or not, but it isn't, just a spoiler alert. And now let's talk about the connections. So, connecting to the solar charge controller, it's very simple. In the first position, you have the panel, then the battery, and there is the load. So, and everything is marked as plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus, but it's simple. But First, you have to connect the panel itself. The panel has that jack and with that jack you can, we can wire that to the solar charge controller. Make sure that you are using an isolated Phillips screwdriver. In my case I have Phillips headed screws, but if you have flattened, then you use just a flattened screwdriver. Make sure that you don't have something like that as a connection, because it could create a short circuit in your system. Next is the connection for the battery. So you should check your colors. The plus is for me, it's marked like with a white label over here. And, and this is my plus wire. So let me wire accordingly to that. Make sure that the cables are tight and good and well connected. So at the moment we won't use any load. We will use just as it is at the moment. Let's connect the charge controller to the panel itself. And you should see if would be more sunnier a bit then the charge controller should show us 
some sign of life. Yeah, there were a short circuit you might not have seen, but if these two, two points are connecting together, then your control system will stop it to work. They were connected together somewhere here and the end. But anyhow, let's connect to the battery. Here we see we have 21 volts and the panel is charging. Okay. Is this a good way to charge your battery? No, it isn't. Because you have to make sure that you are not using the default. Instead, you are setting up the proper amount of voltages. And if you check it, like this is already screwed, like it is showing that it will let 29.5 volts into the battery. And it can do that because the battery itself, it can't take up so much. So let's set up a, uh, that properly. So this is indicating that we have a 24 volt battery setup, but it, that this is a 12 volt. In the previous scene, you have seen that we have 20 something volts to charge that 12 volt battery, which is not correct. How can you adjust that? Basically, if you connect your solar controller at first to the panel, then it will detect this is a 20 volts battery and it will adjust your controller already right away as in the 20 volt range. And after, if you are connecting your battery itself, then it will still show the charge controls and the limits accordingly to the 24 volts. So instead, what you should do, disconnect everything and connect first the battery. It's a very important step to connect first the battery. If you connect it, then the solar charge controller will detect this is a 12 volt battery and will adjust accordingly everything to that. So, yep, and after then you can connect to the controller and everything will remain the same. Let's talk about the battery types first of all. If you go to the settings in the very end, actually you have three Bs. It's B1, B2 and B3. Accordingly to the documentation, B1 stands for exactly this type of battery. Sealed lead acid battery. That's the B1 battery. B2 stands for the GL battery, which you can see in the picture over here. And the B3 stands for and the BT, B3 stands for the floated battery, which is floated with some distillated water. This is the battery type for that. But actually, this is a very old battery. And we can see that even in the documentation. B1 sealed, B2 chair, and B3 floated. So we talked about the battery types as per battery type 1, battery type 2 and battery type 3. Every battery itself has the specs. So you should make sure that you are following the specs. In my case, the battery it is showing as per the cycle use, you should use 4.4 volts. For the floating use, you should use uh, between 13.5 and 13.8 volts and to extend your battery life you should follow that guidance what is provided by your manufacturer in my case i have adjusted to 14.4 volts accordingly to the lowest limit of the battery now let's talk about the flow charge the discharge stop 
and the discharge reconnect. This is the discharge reconnect. What is mean? What the discharge reconnect means? The discharge reconnect means when the battery voltage is dropped below 12.6 volt, then it will reconnect to charge after it has charged completely because now it's it's in the halfway through to charge that battery. And what is the discharge stop? So to extend your battery life, if it's discharged below 10.7 volts, then the solar charge controller will stop the exit to put out any power from the load itself to protect your battery. With the proper settings of the solar charge controller and proper use, you can extend your battery life way dramatically than you think. And you usually get your some user manual with the charge controller. Just read it through and make sure that you have followed the right setup for the battery manufacturer accordingly and also you have set it up the solar charge controller and keep in mind first connect the battery and after then the solar panel because this is detecting automatically what is the voltage what is the range that the charge controller should operate on by the way subscribe to my channel if you are interested in my next video where from I will create our own battery power bank from dead laptop batteries. Yep, that's it. So if you think my video will have full about the solar charge controller, then don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.